We've suffered serious destruction, houses and factories, which we've got to rebuild and rebuild quickly. In 1946, peace in Europe was less than a year old. Labour was in power. The wartime Signals Intelligence Service was renamed as GCHQ. Its headquarters in Cheltenham, now iconic. Its London base, not so well signalled. In 1946, Britain and America signed an agreement to share intelligence on other countries, but not to spy on each other's citizens. I've seen documents showing how that agreement was unpicked, allowing the Americans to spy on potentially millions of innocent Brits. The NSA specifically. Two crucial US documents provided by whistleblower Edward Snowden tell the story. Channel 4 News has seen these documents. The first is marked No Fawn. That is not for release even to British intelligence. By 2004, US intelligence had legitimate reasons to worry about British suspects. There were Brits in Guantanamo, shoe bomber Richard Reid was in a US jail. And US spies were clearly concerned that British citizens could pose a threat to the USA. In January 2005, a draft memo from the NSA proposed a new procedure. Even without UK permission, the USA would, quote, target unilaterally, that is, spy, on British citizens and even British communications systems. The memo makes clear the results would remain no fawn, meaning the UK would not be informed. In the weird world of intelligence, you're allowed to write memos where you show different partners different bits of the same memo. So, in the part they showed GCHQ, the Americans said they might target Brits with the full knowledge and cooperation of the British government. In the bit they didn't show them, it said they would do it unilaterally and without telling the British government. We asked the US government if this memo had ever been actioned. They declined to comment. If that was actually implemented, that means that even our really close alliance and relationship with the US wasn't enough to prevent British citizens being spied on without their government's consent and without any British oversight or knowledge. But a second document, seen by Channel 4 News, gives a fascinating glimpse into the extent of American spying on British citizens done with UK agreement. The problem arises because of the large amounts of data we all generate as we interact on email, mobile phone, chat services. In 2004, the memo reveals the UK allowed the USA to store and target any UK landline number linked to a suspected person. On the 16th of June 2007, that was expanded, so it could include mobiles, faxes, email and IP address. Before this, any British contact details gathered accidentally had to be, quotes, minimised, that is, destroyed on the NSA's database. The important thing here is who it affects. By definition, somebody whose mobile number or internet address is collected accidentally is not a terror suspect. But it goes further. The USA is using so-called pattern of life analysis. If I email a terror suspect and then email everybody else in my contacts book to come to a party, well, they can have their data collected as well. The typical person has, say, 190 Facebook friends. By the time you pull in their friends and their friends too, you're looking at a network of five million people. So to track just one person, you've ended up bringing in five million. When the Edward Snowden revelations began, a lot of people's reaction was, why is it a problem if the Americans can see our data? These documents show, until 2007, even the British government thought it was a problem. So, who authorised the change? Jack Straw was Foreign Secretary until May 2006. His successor was Margaret Beckett. She was Foreign Secretary when the second memo was drawn up. Both Jack Straw and Margaret Beckett have declined to comment. The documents leave many questions unanswered but they do confirm definitively and for the first time that the USA does spy on UK citizens who are not terror suspects.